Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of A Cup of Joe. My name is Joe Scobito, and super pumped on the show. Today, I have Alan Ho. Alan is a Senior Director, Head of Global Partner Marketing at TIPCO. So thanks so much for being on the show, Alan. Hey, thank you for having me. I have a cup of Joe, too. Uh-huh. I can't really see it. On. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, you're ready to go. Yeah, I no, I'm really excited uh, for the opportunity to share some of my experiences, right? And uh, hope we can get a good conversation going. Abs- absolutely, I'm very excited as well. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to get your thoughts on because you're in the partner marketing sh- partner marketing role now. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see, you know, partner marketing teams make. And I know there are a ton of them. We'll talk about maybe some of the most common ones you've seen, and then we'll talk about some of the common challenges we talked about in our previous call. So making sure that the business model is aligned with what the partners are doing. Um, and then also thinking, moving away from single um, dimensional marketing to more kind of integrated marketing. So those are some of the things I'd love to pick your brain on today. So we'll dive in and once again, would love to get your thoughts on what are some of the biggest mistakes you think um, <laughs> partner marketing teams are making? <laughs> Well, I, I'm going to say this, right? This, this topic is pretty close to my heart. In fact, uh, anything to do with marketing is pretty close to my heart, right? I, I you know, from, from my perspective, uh, partner is actually a, a part of uh, in any organization, right? Uh, because it, it basically uses partner to, to enter into a market that is uh, that's, uh, kind of harder to reach, right? As a corporate entity, especially when you look at software company, uh, be it we base in the states or based in, in uh, Europe, one one of the challenges is basically uh, to understand the nuances, uh, or the 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 legality, the the workflow, or even the, the relationships from human to human perspective, right? Uh, and, and and this is where the value of the partner will bring. But I think I think a lot of organization does take partner uh, to. Uh, well, too lightly, right? Or, or rather to treat partner as if they are the same or having the same mindset as yourself, right? So it, 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 it tends to, when we look at it from a software perspective, uh, our, our main goal is to sell software and to get as many users as possible, right? To establish one with business, bring value to our customer and whatnot. However, there's actually a component in partner that actually will Right, affect the way that they they interact with us. Right, uh, what they a lot of partner what they tend to want to do is they want the services component. They want to deliver added value uh, to the, their customers. Right, using our solution, and and this this is where where gaps starts to uh, spread. I mean, start to starts to starts to have gaps between us and and the partner because. You know, selling software and selling solutions is very different, right? Um, whereas, when we look at uh, when we look at how we treat partner, do you treat partner the same way as you treat uh, your direct sales, right? Uh, there's a high chance that you don't, right? Uh, do you expect the same sales cycle as, as the partner sales cycle, right? Especially with services component in it, and there's a high chance that you don't. So when you think about marketing. This is actually, uh, you, you have to think about it, right? Because expecting the partner to behave uh, the same way as your internal sales, uh, it, it, I, I, think, I think that is a gap. And then chances are there are challenges, right? Especially when they have different business outcome or they expect different business outcome as us. So, you know, it's all about business outcome. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I see the same thing. We work with a lot of different tech, tech companies and you're absolutely right. The biggest challenge I see is it goes back to mindset. So as you, as you rightly said, software companies want to sell software. The partners or agencies, whoever you're working with, they want to sell the, the services, they want to sell the solutions because that's how they make money. Um, so I guess it's, it's about understanding how they generate revenue for their business and how you can support them. Um, it's as simple as that. Totally. Um, totally. So I think, yeah, that, that's, you know, I guess the question is, you know, how do you bridge the gap? And you talked about, you know, sometimes you, a lot of companies deprioritize partner marketing because you don't have direct control um, the same way you would have your internal sales team, you can, you know, um, but you, you don't have that control. So I think that as you talked about last time, that that tends to deprioritize partner marketing to some extent, although it's a huge part of many companies, particularly in tech companies. Um, I guess it goes back to kind of how do you 
make sure that you're training mm -hmm. the same way? Um, I guess it's a big question. Yeah, I think, you know, when we look at today's marketing effort, right, uh, a lot of focus is on data, a lot of focus is on ROI, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and if we look at, if we take a step back and look at how marketers have transformed through the years, uh, they tend to uh, skip towards uh, the measurement of the outcome, right? And, and in hope of uh, using their measurement to accelerate their, their business, right? Um, however, I think, I think this, is, this is where the gap of the partner would slightly uh, be, uh, be pretty obvious, right? Uh, simply because one, if you, in, if you solely depend on uh, marketing outcome, what you really want is the control, as well as the ability to monitor uh, the lead, uh, how lead are progressing and whether it's a close, is it properly tech. If you go and if you pass a lead over to the partner, this is where a lot of organization uh, has broken uh, links, right? Or broken workflow where, where the partners do not provide timely feedback uh, it's, it's harder to, to, uh, to get partners to, to provide uh, uh, updates on opportunity and whatnot, right? And a lot of this depending on the relationship between yeah. us, the partner as well as our direct sales or our indirect sales, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is where, where uh, you cannot drive a certain form of consistency even from a reporting point of view, right? So when we, when we talk about bridging the gap, right, uh, it's, just really, it's really talking about... Uh, how do you leverage on technology to actually facilitate uh, the, 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 the passing of these, the updates of this the workflow? If you are able to achieve that, this is where marketing value can, can be accurately uh, presented. Because if you don't do that, this then comes back down to the question of why should I invest in partner? And, and a lot of time, uh, um, I would say that marketing tends to take a uh, the easier way out, right? I'll just put my money on where I can get ROI and the destination of ROI is I'll put it where I can measure it, right? Yeah. Uh, so even if partners are doing a good job, however, if there's no connection between the marketing dollar versus the outcome, someone might make a call and say, hey, I don't see that investment. Maybe I don't need to invest in that portion. Right? That, mm -hmm. that, that, that's the problem. Right? So I think it's a very good point. It goes back to what you're saying earlier is business outcomes. I mean, you can't expect you know, the same measurability or tracking with a partner as you would internally. But at the same time, on the flip side of the coin is with partners, you get scalability. Because um, you'll always be limited with the amount of in internal headcount and resources you have on the sales side. Um, but if you're penetrating new markets or you want to grow globally, that's what kind of partner marketing can kind of play. So it's, it's a double-edged sword because at the same time, you want the measurability, you want the control, but at the same time, you also want you know, scalability in certain markets. Exactly, exactly. You know, the other thing that, that uh, we, we tend to look at as well is, uh, you know, we, we don't do, even when we, when we look at partner, engage partner from a partner marketing perspective, we don't give equal treatment, right? Uh, we, we will actually lean towards partner who will uh, uh, be more keen to collaborate with us, right? I'm not talking about business, right? I'm talking about marketing here. Because, because there are they are, they are partners who simply don't need marketing. Simply yeah. because they are entrenched into an account or they are already known for certain services that deliver, they are getting enough opportunity on, on, in their pipeline. Versus partner who, who likes to grow, you know, who likes to, um, who likes to actually uh, grow their business, get into new business and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Now the thing about part marketing is, you know, it, it doesn't really matter you lean towards one partner against the other partner. The, the, the fact is, any form of marketing amplifies your brand in the market, mm. right? Because, uh, you know, if you don't lean with the big boys, you, you might go into the second tier partner. But having the second tier partner, right, having them to, to work with you closely does amplify the brand itself. So, so it's not all loss, right, even though you don't, uh, you don't lean towards the big guys or... or second tier it really doesn't it is marketing after all right. you're absolutely right and i think this is where i think a lot of tech companies really struggle is you know the partners have definitely different levels of sophistication when it comes to marketing and sales capabilities so you know do you directly go with those who already have the in-house capabilities like you said who don't really need marketing maybe they already have a good enough market share in their space or do you kind of spend more time on the long tail of partners who maybe don't have particularly good marketing or are trying to strengthen it. I guess it's a 
tough question, but I'd love to hear thoughts. <laughs> I, I think it's a balancing act, right? Uh, and, and, and you need a bit of both, right? Uh, in, in fact, not just about whether do they have tech in, 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 in-house or not. It's, it's also about whether the, the, the business model makes sense to them or not, right? Uh, because what you really want to drive is consistency uh, in, in going to market, right? What you do not want is peaks and belly, right? You, you actually want to establish a, a form of consistency simply because uh, from a marketing perspective, what you really want is to create a surround effect, right? You, you turn left, you see your brand, you turn right, you see your brand, you talk to person A, they talk about your brand, you talk to person B, hopefully they talk about your brand too, right? And, and if you are able to achieve that, that is where, where you will be able to gain permanent mind share, right? Uh, and not, and not, um, you're not the second or third tier, right? So if I am to take a step back and say, hey, you know, if I want to drive consistency, uh, the, the first thing that you, you do have to look into is whether the business model does drive consistency, mm-hmm. right? If you, business model could be a problem. The partner tech might be a problem, right? Uh, you know, you have a partner who is simply focusing on reselling. All they want is the margin for the software, right? You, you, that itself already gives you an indicator, right? Uh, it it, it commoditizes the, the effort from a marketing perspective versus partner who will value add, uh, build uh, IP intellectual property around the solution that you provide. Uh, this is the kind of partners that, that actually has, has a little bit more skin in the game, right? Mm-hmm. Because that, that is their, their, their bread and butter, right? That's the differentiator. Or, or when you look at business model, you know, you know do, do they make uh, a lot of money from licenses or do they make a lot of money on on services, right? And, and this affect how or the type of engagement you want to drive from a from partner marketing perspective because you need to pick the right one mm. to drive consistency, right? Then the second point is really on on, uh, on the tech, right? I, I think what is pretty interesting as well, you know, being, being in IT for so many years, right? Uh, you know, IT, IT software companies has, has, has budget to invest in, in good MarTech stack, you know, a good CRM, but, but it's, it's very uh, unrealistic to expect partners to have it. Yeah. All right. So, so the, the question is how you bridge that gap, right? Some organization, right? I, I even know of large, large uh, system integrators as of today just implemented a CRM. You, you'll, be, you'll be go, wow, you mean you're so big and you never hold a CRM before? And the answer is no, right? And, and if, you, if you kind of take a step back and say, hey, you know, if they do not have a CRM, and yet what you wanted to do is the ability to monitor the lead progress, isn't this itself pose a problem, All right? And this is where, where you start wanting to think about whether do you want to put a layer of, of tech in between your MarTech versus theirs, uh, or, or a layer where it can support them of uh, what they lack of, right, internally to, to do it, right? And this is, this is where the tools of uh, partner marketing management tools actually comes into play, right? And this is where um, at the end of the day, right, uh, where do you see the value that allow you to invest in a PMM system, right? And investing in PMM, again, is an amplification into the market that, uh, that help you to, to grow your, 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 your share. Right? Um, so, so these are the things that, that, that potentially help to bridge the gap. Right between uh, what our expectation is versus what partner expectation is for you to go to market together. No, so you bring up some really good points. I think one of which is not only understanding kind of the marketing and sales capabilities within the, your partner, but also the tech capabilities. Um, as you say, you know, if they don't have a CRM system, it's difficult even internally for them to to track things, and obviously makes it very very difficult for the the tech company to do so as well. And it goes back to what we were saying around kind of measurability in the whole tracking process. If you help them implement some kind of platform where they're able to do it internally, then obviously it's going to hopefully help you, you know, you on your, your end and kind of your internal reporting. So there's a lot of, I guess, elements okay. in play here when it comes to your partners. Um, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit and jump into something a bit more tactical because I think this is something we were touching on last time is a lot of partner marketers think very much in terms of single, single dimensions. Um, they think of single channels. So they say, okay, we're going to run a webinar and that's it. Um, <laughs> but in your case, once again, I think you had a different take on this, which I would love to hear more on. 
Well, uh, traditionally, right, uh, when we talk about partner marketing, let, let's start with the funding first, right? Uh, first, first of all, a lot of, a lot of uh, software or, or even hardware company, they have uh, the marketing development fund, the MDF, right? Traditionally, even if you don't have, you actually tap uh, the few marketing fund to actually uh, execute uh, effort with, with whatever marketing tactic you have with the partner. Uh, you know, if, if I am to, to, to look at what, what happened maybe up to 12 to 18 months ago, right? Uh, what, what we tend to do is, hey, partner, do you want to run an event? I got $10,000 for you, right? And you wrap around a condition and say, hey, you know, uh, if I invest in a dollar, you invest a dollar, right? Sometimes you don't have such a requirement and then you go, right? And then what will happen is in that event, you will get some leads and then you start chasing the partner down. You stay in an opportunity, you stay in an opportunity, right? And the partner get back and say, there's no opportunity. Then what, what do you say? You say, the event is bad. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's very single dimensional because we, we, we keep repeating that flow. Right, in, in hope of uh, we hit a jackpot somewhere down the stream. So you basically are casting your net wide. Right? Now what you're not doing is uh, you're not developing a, a relationship with a partner and you're not developing that relationship with the market that you want to operate in. So in my view, uh, when you are solely focused on tactical, right? Event here, I, it can be webinar, it can be a physical event. You're not, uh, you're not helping, uh, uh, or you're not deliver what I call as an integrated marketing through mm -hmm. the lens of a partner, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 this is this is where my take is different, right? Because from my perspective, if the partner is worth investing, we are not talking about events, right? We're talking about the full integrated marketing uh, mm -hmm. opportunity, right? That includes event, includes thought leadership, include account based marketing. Right. Uh, what I don't do is I don't spread out my fund and go to 10 partners to do 10 events. What I'll do is I might pick three and I have more concentrated fund and end up having integrated marketing effort. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and what this actually allows you to do is now you have leaders, right, that you have across the year. So, I mean, like what I uh, mentioned previously, right, the idea is to maintain consistency across. Mm -hmm. Right? When you engage the market, you engage them through multiple channels. Event is a channel, webinar is a channel. What if I say uh, content marketing is a channel, uh, content syndication uh, through account-based marketing is a channel, right? Uh, putting your, your partners, uh, thought leaders, right? Up front and center, helping them to curate uh, thought leadership, right? Uh, content and, and and by amplifying your own brand, now, now you're speaking through somebody else's mouth, right? And which, which equates to peer uh, comment, right? And, and, and what you want is, is the word of mouth, right? Mm -hmm. And when, when you have start having these levers, right? Uh, it reduces the peak and valley. I'm not saying that it eliminates, but yeah. now you have a, a more... You have the, the, the peaks and the valleys are not that extreme. It has less, right? Now, if you wrap this around with 10 partners, now it could be a valley from partner A, but it's a peak from partner B. What you get is a neutralized effect, right? It also means that the branding is out in the market all the time, mm. right? Despite the fact that the, uh, the, now you are basically doing, doing a salon song. Right. Uh, and, 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 and my thought is really don't do single dimension, go for integrated marketing. Don't, 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 don't go with everybody, go with some. Mm. All right. uh, and of course that goes back to those some must be able to give you lead feedback, how you progress, so on and so forth, able to use the system that you put in place, workflow and whatnot, have alignment with sales to ensure that there's no sales conflict and so on and so forth. Right. So it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's quite a dance, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. I think, like I said, if there's yeah. an art behind kind of picking the right partners, because as you said, you know, you're spending a lot of time in terms of resources and kind of investment with them. So it makes sense. Um, Alan, there's a really a lot of really, really good tips in here. I really, really appreciate you sharing your insights today with us. It's been super helpful. 
Um, last question is, how can people get in touch with you if they want to find out more about you and what you do? Oh, uh, by all means, right? Uh, connect me up on, on LinkedIn if you, if you want to, right? Uh, send me a message and say, hey, you know, uh, you, you, you heard this video and, and you'd like to have a chat. I always love to talk to someone who, who likes to exchange notes on marketing, right? Because this is a really interesting topic, right? Uh, and, and, uh, and knowing my peers out there is always, uh, it's always good, right? Yeah. To learn from each other. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Well, Alan, thank you so much. I really appreciate it again. Thank you so much. And if you're watching this and you're in partner marketing or you're marketing in general, please do feel free to share it. A lot of really good tips from Alan. So thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you next time. Take care. All right. Thank you, Joe.